Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another segment of ASAF Cafe. I am your host, ASAF Adonai, and once again, affectionately, our aging rocker Emmett on my mm -hmm. immediate left. Yeah. <laughs> I worded it a little different this time. Yeah. And uh, we'll see, it's 11.50 now, so hopefully you'll get through this, because we know you have some allergies. Yeah, I do. Here. And, um, Thankfully, like on the 31st, that. I'm seeing a specialist. I finally was referred to a specialist. But uh, first, we must pray, oh God. Go ahead. And then, bless our time, our food, whatever, together, and our time and our show, in Jesus' name. I'm in agreement. I won't be able to do the cafe next week, I don't think, because one of the stipulations the doctor, or the nurse told me, <clears throat> I won't be able to have any antihistamines all next week. So they want to flush all that out so that they can actually take the test to see what I'm allergic to, but antihistamines would mask it, so there'd be no results. I see, I see. So next week, I'm gonna be in misery. If I'm coughing and happening, I won't have any relief. It's just, I just need a lot of prayers. Lord, protect me during that next week, in Jesus' name, but it's the only way to get to the bottom of this, and they'll run tests. I'll pray for you here in a second here. And see exactly what's going on, you know? Because uh -huh. I'm allergic to something. I don't know, I hope it's not a food allergy to something I love or something. I'm gonna freeze on that cord. Lord, thank you for this day and this show. Bless Emmett as he goes through um, his procedures and I ask that he'll have a complete healing and that his sinuses will get well. In Christ's name. Amen, yeah. Still I'm not sick, it's just this show. allergy. Some, <laughs> <laughs> just, just some sort of grass is like back behind there or dust or some mold or I don't know uh -huh. what, you know. So have you been otherwise? Quite well. Good. It's been very cold though, have you noticed that? Yeah, I know. It was like below 10 last <laughs> yes. week. And so, that was very miserable. Yeah, yeah. For the last couple of weeks, just starting in January, it has been below 10. It has been below wind chills. I know. Even in the daytime, it only has a high of five when wind chill will have five below. Oh yeah. And even just um, um, on Monday or so, it was below zero in the morning. Yeah. On Tuesday, I haven't been able to do much. Thankfully, a friend of mine got me to some groceries. I got some extra groceries, so I just kind of hibernated. That's what I did, too. <laughs> Slept a lot, too. I'd sometimes just, you know, I've had enough. I'm just going to go to bed at nine o'clock. Send my yeah, night first and go to bed and then wake up at 9 a.m. Or 10. Just, you know, there's nothing for me to do if it's below zero. I know it. So just log everything up, pray, and then just hibernate like a bear. It's very nice and very peaceful. It's cold out there, but I can read nice, cuddly corduroy books oh, yeah, and have nice dreams right. teddy bears, you know. <clears throat> but, oh, by the way, did I tell you it was so cold? <clears throat> I didn't tell the audience this. But there was ice on my door, even inside my apartment. There was a really? thing of ice. <laughs> it got so cold and there was ice on my windows. Uh-huh. Oh, my word. You could tell when it's below zero because a bunch of ice collected on my door, even oh, inside. Yeah. yeah. That freezing. <clears throat> you needed extra sweaters. You needed layers if you even go and go out a few feet. Oh, yeah. It was dangerous. Without that, you're gonna end up dead. You could die of hypothermia in a few well, minutes. Well, you know, you've been to my apartment. You know what I did? I went to take out the trash when we had that below zero. All I did was walk down the stairs to the corner, just around the, the next building, mm -hmm. like a circle, mm -hmm. just to dump the trash. And do you know that I couldn't feel my fingers by the time I just went from yeah, around yeah. there up to the stairs just to mm -hmm. go to the apartment? The tips were already frozen. Yeah. And they say you shouldn't pour hot water on frozen hands. No, Use no. warm water. <laughs> right, to right, avoid that exactly. Feeling. So, yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful state, Montana. And yeah. Missoula's a beautiful city, but boy, it gets cold like cold in the winter. Oh, oh yeah. And I haven't had to seen it this cold in years. I, I remember one time it was 60 below. Were you here when it was 60 below? No, zero? but I was. I, I first came to. Um, Missoula in 96, and that first yeah. winter, it was 25 below zero. And we're not talking wind chill. Chills. That yeah, was just the 20, temperature. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> in fact, this church that I used to go to at the time, they canceled services for the sake yeah. of the elderly. Yeah. <clears throat> that pastor said, hey, it's 25 below zero. You guys just go home. Exactly. There's, There's no, no sense yeah. heating this church up mm -hmm. when it's that cold. So he stood out in front of the congregation off and on in, in, in his car, and mm -hmm. he just sent everybody home. Just 
as people pulled up, he said, and That's good. Home. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. And I was kind of glad. Cause it, was, it was 25 yeah, below exactly. zero. And I wasn't in Missoula at the time. I was in Billings at that time. But my goodness. Yeah. Yikes, it was cold. So. Yeah. One time over in the Bitter or even here, 1989 or 90, or was it 88? I think 89, 90, it got. 60 below with the wind chill. Oh my word. Yeah, yeah. That that's, is that's dangerous. You just can't go, you can't even go to work. Yeah, a lot of people had to stay home from work. It was too dangerous. It was, it. that was violently cold. The headline in the Missoulian was, Baby, it's cold out there. And it was. <laughs> it was 60 below, that can kill you. That can, I actually, I did something stupid. I did try to go to work. I was going to take one of the buses, you know, to my job at 4Bs, and I was sitting my parents' home over in, Florida, you know, the Bitterroot, and their dogs. I thought uh -huh. I could make it, you know. I mean, it's not that cold. Oh, you tried to walk it? Is what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, and I had to go back home, I, and I, I couldn't do it. And I had to call my boss saying, I can't do this, I can't come in, I really tried. I couldn't, and she said, don't worry about it. Don't endanger your health or your life by going out there. Yeah, I had to just hibernate and stay home in the warmth. I hear you on that. Yeah. <clears throat> It is too dangerous when it's 60 below. What's scary is to get out there and then slip on the ice and it's nighttime and nobody sees you. And, and you you're in real danger. When it's that cold. No cell phone, you're in real danger right there. It's a death sentence. That's whoa. <clears throat> Playing the song. Yeah. Well, I remember when I was, when I first moved to Lewiston, Idaho, everyone knows how much I love Lewiston. The year was 1981, or was it 82? Well, I wasn't really used, I was only used to Tucson, Arizona, the hot weathers. I was not used to 10 above. Yeah. I walked to school in 10 above weather, and I was not used to this. Finally, I had to go to the nurses. I am so cold, I can't believe it. I'm in gloves and my <coughs> coat and everything. And basically, where is my coat? I think I left it open. Out there, I just want to, um... Oh, oh you go be yeah. What in the heck happened to my coat? Well, anyway, I was pumped up. And I'm playing... Where has my little dog gone while Emmett has gone to get his coat? That's the name of the song, Where Has My yes. Little Dog Gone. I'll do it again. But anyway... Anyway, and, I, and, and the nurse asked, were you playing in the snow? Did you take, did you wear your gloves? Yes, I did. Were you playing in the snow? No, I wasn't. I, I'm just frozen. What in the heck kind of weather is this? And I had, first time I ever had experienced 10 above, and I was not prepared for this. Yeah. You have to dress in layers is what you have to do, and if, you have to kind of give your body time to acclimatize to a cold climate, because if you live in Tucson, oh, yeah. or Hawaii like this, you're not used to this. You're not used to cold weather. Uh-huh, yeah, that's true. You're bred true. for a hotter climate. Yeah, that's true. That is true. And actually, you know, I used to love hot weather, though my body has, my body has changed. I used to love 100 degree weather. I used to love it. But you don't anymore? No, something about my body, it's just too hot. It's just changed. And I used to love the, the heat. And everyone in Montana was complaining about the heat. It was 100 degrees. How can we survive this? I was just out in it, loving it. It felt good to my bones and my muscles, but anymore in my older age, at age 48, 49, I can't do it. I just can't, yeah. 49, I can't do it. It's too hot for me. <laughs> yeah, so my body's definitely changing. You know this song by chance? No. It's called the Tango. Uh huh. You never heard it before? No. Somewhere. Was it on The Simpsons or something? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I know you don't like The Simpsons too much. It's alright, the cartoon. I preferred their earlier stuff to their later work. They, they're not funny anymore, but when they were in their earlier years, that was funny. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I think they've run out of ideas. Yeah, I was just getting ready to say that. Uh, that what, that show's been on, what, over 20 years now? Yeah, they've run, run out of ideas, I think. 
Yeah, let's see if I can figure out how to play that. Mm -hmm. Well, let me try it up here. Yeah. <coughs> I, I can really figure it out yeah. if I really uh, it's, it's social commentary, and I can see having a family like that, or I can relate to a Homer Simpson, or uh, there are kids out there like Bart Simpson. It's just funny as heck. <coughs> Something like that, but yeah. Yeah, it's I, funny. I, I, it used to be anyway, but you know. I think one of the funniest episodes of The Simpsons I ever saw. I don't. I don't watch that often, but I have to admit I do have a couple of episodes in yeah. my VHS collection at home because it's yeah. just uh, what an iconic cartoon. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, one of the funniest episodes I saw of The Simpsons, at least to me, was the one when Bart was on the foreign exchange program. Oh yeah. And they sent him to France, and mm. then the boy from France was sent to the Simpson home. And it turns out the boy from France was a spy. Yeah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. he, he was in Bart's old room on the computer yeah. sending out secrets to France. And then I felt sorry for Bart Simpson in France because they kind of turned him into a slave and made him crush yeah. grapes or whatever it was mm -hmm. and work out in the field. And it, it was, yeah. But it was amusing, though. And the Simpson family was oblivious to this boy sending secrets to yeah, France. Yeah, yeah from the United States, and I just found that amusing. But only the, yeah. what's the name, Matt Gonig, is that how his last Matt, name is pronounced? The creator of The Simpsons. Matt Judd? Matt Gonig is something like yeah. that. Well anyway, only I was thinking, he only he could think up something like that, yeah, yeah. an episode like that. And I mean, this boy was just being really nice. Hi, Mr. Yeah. Simpson, just really, just really a oh, nice yeah. little kid until they got in that room. Yeah, I didn't so. think that was too funny, but one of my favorites, <coughs> I just found it amusing yeah. for some reason. Was supersized Homer, where Homer wanted to get on disability. Uh -huh. He wanted to gain the system. He couldn't find one, but there was a disability of hyper obesity. Mm -hmm. So he force fed himself and made himself gain tons of weight. And then he was on dis uh, He worked from home, but <coughs> he had to save the power plant. But I was the way they did it was hilarious. I thought really? that was funny. Algae things, you know, taken care of before spring, because spring is just two months away. It's going to get on March 21st. So now I want to get this taken care of before the spring rains. Yeah, well, don't worry about coming next week because, um, yeah, you never know what's going to happen. I'm going to get off course for a second. Mm -hmm. I just briefly want to congratulate Donald Trump. He's going to be sworn in tomorrow. Yes. And I'm not going to get into all of the political yeah, aspects exactly. of it, but, uh, why? Wow, can you believe it? 2017, and yeah. we have a 45th president coming up. Amazing. Yeah. I, I just I, I just think that's just, it is amazing. Yeah, it is. And I will be watching the um, inauguration with same here. interest and yes, curiosity. Yes, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I know there are people protesting, which I think they should not be. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I normally don't talk about religion or politics, so I don't want to like really get into politics exactly. necessarily. <laughs> but I think congratulations are in order. Oh, absolutely. I think it's congratulations should be in order for any presidential. Well, candidate, absolutely. You know, not just Donald Trump. I'm just talking about the whole. Yeah. And I think it's been like that throughout the history of when this country had presidents. There's always going to be people who don't like yes. the candidate, like back with Lincoln, even. Yes. <clears throat> Yeah, exactly. Jefferson. Uh, you know, like Abraham Lincoln, boy, he sure had a lot of people disliked. Oh, yeah, him. he did. Goodness. But uh, now it's uh, 2017. It's Donald Trump's Yeah, team. it's the opposite. He's going to be yeah. probably getting a dose of what Lincoln got. And, yes. And um, um, what's our first president? George Washington. George Washington, yeah. So, I, did I say Jefferson? Yeah. Well, we did have a President Jefferson, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Well, anyway, um, the point that I'm trying to make is that all these presidents have always had people not like them. The only difference yeah. is they weren't in the 21st century with the technology we have. Yes. They didn't have CNN news in your face and all that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, now it's Donald Trump's team. Yeah, yeah. And then four years or eight years from now, it'll be the next candidate. They'll find something wrong with that person, probably. Definitely. 
But I guess that's the. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess that's the uh, way it works. Yeah. Aren't you glad you're not running for president? So, sometimes I wish I was. I could do a lot, but you know what Donald Trump went through. I don't want to get in politics, but it takes nerves of steel to go what you go through. Good people all gets cr always get crucified. Yeah, they in do. The they primaries. just really, they bash your family and your life. Yeah. They'll do anything under the sun to try to keep you from yeah. getting to that White yeah, Exactly. House. And, and this is why good people don't run, because they know their head is going to roll. If, you know, they, yeah, and that just, Donald has nerves of iron to well, I put up you, with this horror that he went through. Before <laughs> I change the subject, I'll tell you, if I were the President of the United States, yeah. I would hire Dr. Phil to follow me everywhere. Oh, yeah. And I'd get therapy every night. Yeah, you'd have to. <laughs> and then another thing I would do is I would have Jay Sekulow. I don't know if you know him or yes, not. Yes, I do. The radio guy. Of, yes. I would consult you. You betcha. <laughs> and I'd have that whole organization praying prayers every night. Absolutely. I mean, I like listening to Jay Sekulow. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, I've heard him because, on the 700 Club. Yeah, he just seems to get into stuff that the other media necessarily won't yeah. uh, talk about. Mm -hmm. So, but I'll never be president because I'm not interested in that. Yeah. I just wanted this wish yeah, yeah. Mr. Trump well. He's got less than 24 hours and by the time this show airs, he'll already be the president. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Whatever a person's religious beliefs are or their political beliefs, I think it's time for people to unite. Oh, it is. Yeah, that's just the way our system goes. You if you want to have political battles after the inauguration, yeah, that's do it, fine. But re but respect the inauguration. Respect the process. I know, and I, I have office, to agree you know. with that. Even and I know there's people that'll probably watch this that'll be like, Ugh, but you know, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's Trump or somebody or Reagan yeah, or even be, Hillary. Yeah, even with Hillary, I'd watch that. Of course. If I were a, a representative, I'd show it. I'm going to support the, prof, the process and the office. Yeah, the just, office just, just of the, the office, presidency just, just and the, the transfer of power. Yeah. But anyway, I will be watching that tomorrow, and, and I'm, I'm very, very curious. And mm. I, I can imagine there are a lot of prayers going up. But, you know, I said this before. Yeah. Um, there might be a reason why. I Mr. think so. Trump I think so. Yeah. I mean, from a spiritual. Yes, point of exactly. View. And think about it. Um, I shared this story before. Mm -hmm. The the story in the book of Esther in the yes. Old Testament. Now Esther came from obscurity. Mm -hmm. Literally, she didn't even have parents. She was raised by her uncle Mordecai, mm -hmm. and so. King Xerxes, this is a cool story. Yeah. <laughs> king Xerxes was king at that time, married to Vashti. And so Vashti was a good looking queen. And Xerxes wanted to show her off, show off her beauty to his mm -hmm. dignitaries. And she said, No, I'm not gonna parade myself in front of these guys. Yeah. And I don't think it was sexual or anything. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, the King's advisor said, If you let that woman get away with that, then all the wives will disrespect their husbands and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they got rid of Queen Vashti, which I guess that was probably tacky. Maybe yeah, it was a yeah. divorce, whatever. I don't know. It doesn't say in the Old Testament. But anyway, they, the, king, the king got rid of her. And then they had a beauty pageant. This is a cool story I'm leading up to. They had a beauty pageant. Uh -huh. And this obscure Jewish girl named Esther was entered into that contest yep. and wound up winning that contest. And she became the queen. Yep. And Mordecai told her, don't tell that king you're Jewish. Keep that secret. Yep. And that was wise counsel. And I think the Jewish people are wonderful people, but I yeah, think exactly. that was good counsel. Oh, yes. So, Esther becomes the queen. Uh -huh. you, you'll see where I'm leading up. Yes. Esther becomes the queen, and then the king promoted a guy named Haman. Yeah. And so everybody was, like, paying homage to Haman. Mm-hmm. But Mordecai said, I'm not going to bow down to this guy. I don't care who he is. Yeah. And so because of that, Haman gets ticked off and said, okay, you're not going to bow to me. I'm going to not only kill you, I'm going to kill your whole race. I'm going to wipe out the whole Jewish race. Mm -hmm. But what Haman didn't know is that the queen was Jewish. Yeah. So, <laughs> yep. so when the word came out that Haman was going to wipe out the Jewish nation, Mordecai tells his daughter that he raised the queen. Mm -hmm. So everybody goes into like three days of prayer because mm -hmm. 
the queen had to tell the king was going to happen, but you couldn't just go to the king because if you were not invited, you'd get your head cut off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so they prayed for like three days, right? And then the queen says, okay, if I get my head cut off, I'll just have to get it cut off. So she goes yeah. to her old husband, and instead of the husband off in her head, what are you doing in my presence? Yeah. He, he takes the scepter, which means you're accepted. Exactly. So the queen goes to the king, and the king is happy to see his own wife. He has some funny rules. He could have cut her head <laughs> yeah, off. Exactly. Too. But he goes, Queen, I'll give you anything you want since you're in my presence. I'll yeah. half the kingdom. She says, I don't want your kingdom. I just want to set up a banquet. So they invite Haman to uh -huh. the banquet. This is a cool story. Yeah. And so the king, the queen, and Haman are at this banquet, right? Mm -hmm. And then the king says, okay, we had this banquet. What do you want? The queen says, I want a second banquet. To get the king really in a good mood, yeah, exactly. right? Exactly. So they have this second banquet, and then the you know the king's in a good mood. He's yeah. like, "I'll give you anything you want, up to half the kingdom. What do you want?" She says, "I want you to save the life of the Jewish people, my people." Yeah. There's a decree set out to kill all the Jews, and that king got ticked. He's yeah. like, "Who dare put a decree to kill the Jewish people?" And the queen says, the guy sitting right next yeah. to you. <laughs> that was such a cool setup. Yeah, definitely. And so that king walked off his throne. He was half-ass dick. Oh, yeah. He was dick, but he was half-ass dick. And so then Hay was like, you got to save my life. You got to spare me, right? After he wants to wipe out the Jews, right? You know, what goes around comes around. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um... The king comes back and sees this guy begging for his life, and in the king's eyes, it looked like he was hitting on her. Mm -hmm. He wasn't really hitting on her. He was just begging for his life, but you know how sometimes yeah. things could appear? And that really set that king off. And what had happened was Haman had these gallows, like mm -hmm. these 50-foot gallows. Yep. He was going to hang Mordecai for not bowing down, which yeah. was the queen's father that raised yeah. him. So one of the king's advisors said, hey, this guy was going to hang Mordecai after he saved your life, king. You ought to hang Haman on the gallows that he was going to hang yeah. Mordecai on. So the king gave the order, and they hung that guy. Yeah. They hung him on the same gallows that he was going to use for Queen yeah. Esther's father yeah. that raised, raised her. And they hung his ten sons, too. Yeah. Because I think they were in on that conspiracy. Oh, yeah. Now, where I'm going with this... Donald Trump is going to become president, and people are got their nose all bent out of shape. Yeah. How do you know two or three years from now some worldwide catastrophe may not happen, and Mr. Trump might be the perfect person to fix it? Exactly. So exactly. that's why I wanted to share that story. You know, they said on, I don't know if it was Jay Secular Radio or what, but they said that people should be praying now because the people have spoken. Exactly. And I'm not here to dog on Ms. Clinton, Secretary Clinton. I'm just saying that the people have made a choice. Exactly. And I know that Mr. Trump may have said some things that made people uncomfortable, but a majority have spoken. <coughs> and mm -hmm. I think people need to give this man a chance because it may not be as bad as people are perceiving. Exactly. It, see, just like Queen Esther. Exactly. This lady who was just obscure. And if you think about it, Donald Trump, in a sense, was obscure in the political oh, yes. world because it is, yeah. he's never held political no. office. He's never been in the military. Nope. But he may be the perfect person for something yes. that might happen a few years from Absolutely. now. Absolutely. And so I shared that story in the Old Testament about Queen Esther because you never know. Yeah. So I wanted to share that with our TV audience. Exactly. And, uh, People should unite and start praying. Yeah. And so when the inauguration takes place tomorrow, I will be watching. Yep. And I'll leave it at that. Yep. So <laughs> anyway, let's play a tune here.
Yeah, Let's Santa try. Lucia, Santa Lucia. <laughs> but anyway, um, what else I going to share with you? Um, this weather, getting back to the weather. I, you know, I think Montana is one of the most beautiful states. I know where our Honolulu set, which mm -hmm. Honolulu, Hawaii yeah. is a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. Now, I've never been to Hawaii, but uh, Luis and I were talking about Honolulu. Mm -hmm. I was once considered mm -hmm. to play the piano mm -hmm. in Honolulu. This was like about 10 years ago. The Nordstrom Company was looking mm -hmm. for a pianist at the time, and they gave me a 30-minute interview over the telephone because they were in Honolulu and mm -hmm. I was here in Montana at that time. I wasn't in Missoula at that time. And uh, at the last minute, they decided to go another direction. Mm -hmm. Now, my salary would have been, tw it would have been 14 to 24 an hour. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry, 18 to 24 an hour, somewhere wow. around there, with benefits. Wow. And, uh, but, yeah. you know, the good Lord probably had a better plan because I wouldn't yeah. have ASAP Cafe. I totally yeah. said, and I wouldn't have my autobiography, Supermarket Pianist, and I wouldn't have uh, uh, that new Lawrence Welk show and all the other stuff. So it's just yeah. funny how things work. It's really funny. Yeah, it is. Yeah, definitely. But um, I feel blessed, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm here. I've been in Missoula almost nine years now. Oh, maybe I'm yeah. about nine years now. But I've been in Montana almost 21 years. Now. I've been in Montana since 1984. And I've been here since 96. Yep. I started in Billings and I played the piano there for like 12 years, mm -hmm. different places, Billings Hotel and so on. And now I'm here, so. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I think I might even get my VCR out tomorrow and just take the whole inauguration. But, you know, that might be impossible because they said that it's going to be going on all day long. Well, they'll have the inauguration where the, he's sworn in. Then he'll make his first speech. But, but then be there'll covering, be dances and I know, but they'll be covering and, uh, news thing yeah. prior to that. No telling how long that's going to mm. take, you know. Hey, let me, would you hand me that? Uh, yeah. I won't be able to record it because my... VCR is broken. It plays, but it doesn't record. I would oh, be really? recording it, yeah. Maybe I can make you a copy of yeah, that. Yeah, thanks. Well, That's... I don't know. It depends on... Uh... Yeah. <coughs> oh, I'm, well, later on today, I'll see if I can get some VHS tapes. First of all, VHS tapes are hard to find. Uh -huh. And then you got to get the kind that probably has about six hours yeah, of recording yeah. time. Something like that, you know. Something fascinating, yes. Well, yeah, because, you know, that might take... Mm. I mean, just the... Um, the inauguration part might take hours and hours. You know how the, the news will start when they yeah. introduce other people. And, oh, yeah, yeah. And that might take it. You know, because they said something on television about it might take all day, you know. And I don't know. Well, that would be the balls. I mean, they're going to have the prayers and they're going to have someone to speak, and then he takes the oath of office, you know. Yeah. Then so. he takes it. So, and then they'll have. The parade, balls and inaugurations, and the parade, <laughs> and then he'll probably dance somewhere with his wife and children. And there'll be a dances and some fun things. And I'm gonna play the Lord's Prayer on yes. you know, for Mr. Yeah. Trump. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what they'll have, you know. tribute to an, a friend that we just recently lost. Yeah. His name was Dan Sackett. He was the bus driver for the Mountain Lion. Oh, yes. Bus. I don't <laughs> know if you knew him. He was the guy that said, good morning. Good no. morning. No, no. It'd be like five o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, people yeah. get on a bus. He's like, good morning, uh -huh. good morning, good morning. Yeah. So, Mary, if you see this, and I'm sure you will when we post it, we want to do a quick tribute to Dan on television. 
I played for his memorial service, um, I think it was last week sometime. Yeah. Well, he, we lost him on Thanksgiving yeah, Day yeah. 2016, but mm -hmm. Mary wanted to wait till after the holiday to ask to not offset yes, exactly, his holidays exactly. and stuff. So they finally had his memorial service at the St. Anthony's Parish. Yeah. And I was really humbled to get the opportunity yeah. to be a small part of that mm -hmm. and play the piano for that. So when we post this, I'll tell Mary that we did a brief minor tribute to Dan Sackett. He was a wonderful person, yeah, yeah. a wonderful human being, and he was just a fine bus driver. He, wonderful. I don't know if you ever met him or ever rode his bus. No, I don't know. He, uh, he, he just was such a delight, mm -hmm. just such a delightful person. And he was always fun to talk to. He'd be driving a bus and oh, talking yeah. to people. And he was just, just a wonderful guy. Wonderful. So he's in heaven now with the Lord. And mm -hmm. I know that probably doesn't necessarily make Mrs. Sackett feel comfortable when you've been with someone for oh, over yeah. 40 years. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Dan was a wonderful person. Mm -hmm. We're wishing good thoughts for Mary Sackett yeah. and her family. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to do this slight tribute on television, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll let her know. So he was really a kind soul. You, you, uh, I wish you could have known him. Yeah, wonderful. He, he was so fun. You could just get on his bus and just ride, and just talk, and just ride. Wow, he cool. didn't have to go nowhere. Just, oh, Dad, I want to hang out with you on the bus for about an hour. You know, by the time cool. I circle around <laughs> from downtown yeah. and, and back to downtown. So it was fun. Yeah. But they had a beautiful memorial service for Good. him. And I was impressed with the music of the other musicians that were mm -hmm. doing their thing. Like this lady, I can't—I don't know her name, but uh, she played this beautiful organ music. Mm -hmm. And then they had like some other players in the back that were doing their thing. Mm -hmm. It was just—it was wonderful. So, wonderful. Uh, yeah, Mountain Lion, Bus, and Missouri, mm -hmm. they're gonna miss him. Mm -hmm. But he—he he was a delight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just a delightful. Yeah. Person. And uh, I'm going to miss him too, I have to admit. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to miss, good morning, good yeah, morning, yeah, yeah. good morning. <laughs> He'd be like 10 people get on there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Any time of the day, it was always good morning. So, But I'm glad I could mention him on this episode of ASAP mm -hmm. Cafe. And for those who don't know this show, this is ASAP Cafe. And the premise of this show, we invite a person every week and they just talk to me as I play the piano about whatever they want to talk about. Of course, you and I have been doing these series of one-on-ones, which is good too. It's a yeah. Hit. Yeah, people are watching. And, you know, like some of the things that Emmett and I have talked about, like we remember the debate we had with Star Trek? Yeah, I loved that. That was fun. Um, Scott Ramp was here and you guys debated, which was yeah, a that was series. <laughs> Star Trek, the original with William Shatner or The Next Generation. Yeah, that was excellent, yeah. With uh, Patrick Stewart. And mm -hmm. that was a fun debate. Yeah, it was. And you and I have talked about things over time like science fiction, time tunnel, yeah. and Lost in Space and Land of the Giants that yeah. they're showing on yeah. MeTV. And yeah, easy listening. We're doing, we're doing a lot easy of listening music. Music. Both, That's yeah. something we both love and so much. And we've talked about conductors and composers mm -hmm. and Herp Alpert. Yep. Yeah. And um, just fun, easy listening music. And we've had guests on the show throughout. Oh, yeah. The series of this show, mm -hmm. Linda Brooks Curtis, delightful lady, Louise Bundy, she's been on this show on mm -hmm. occasion, and we've had, uh, of course, uh, Patty Reed, our yeah. former hostess, she's no longer with us, and yeah. uh, Pee Wee, our mascot. Oh yeah, I remember that <laughs> very much so. <laughs> and this show has just gone through changes, and of course, Professor Robert Green at the university mm -hmm. was on, and it was just a delight having him on, and, and just all the other people that have appeared on this show. Mm -hmm. throughout the history of this show because this show's been it's about two and a half years old now and it's just been so fun yeah well, definitely and uh but i always enjoy the one-on-ones oh definitely they're, they're a lot of fun and we've talked about christ on this show we yep. even had invitations to accept christ uh -huh. as savior on this show and that got good reviews and mm -hmm. it, it, it's just fun you know but as you know for this new year i'm going to start trying to bring in newer Mm -hmm. faces for the mm -hmm. show and stuff like that and uh it, it's been fun yeah yeah and then another thing too i think i shared with you i'm trying to get a job with abc 
Mm -hmm. Thanks to Noel McAvoy. We did a tribute to Noel. Hey, let's do it. It was the tribute that got lost. Let's yes. do a short tribute to Noel. Yeah. Noel, if you see this, we did a tribute to you on the last show, but the show got lost. So we'll do a quick tribute to you now. Yeah. Yeah, Noel McAvoy. She she's a delightful lady. Mm -hmm. Very professional in her reporting. Yeah. Wake up, Missoula, and her city council news. Mm -hmm. and, city and local events at the time when she was here, yeah. so I just wish her well. I think she's going to uh, be a wonderful journalist in the world of journalism. Mm -hmm. I think she's going to take the world by storm, and yeah. I'm, I'm going to be watching her career with interest mm -hmm. because I just think she is very good. She'll probably be the next Barbara Walters or something like that. Yeah, right? yeah. <clears throat> Who are some of the other? Do you know somebody's famous lady, Katie Couric, maybe? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Wendy Williams or mm -hmm. I don't know whoever mm -hmm. <laughs> it'll be Noel McAvoy and I will be an old man by then watching yeah you know, just going yeah go ahead girl <laughs> yeah so Noel if you ever see this Emma and I wish you the best yep yeah. okay um, you wanted to talk about those uh, corduroy books how much time do we have though let's see um, we still got about 15 minutes you want to that would be it? excellent um, I on the show that got lost. Uh, we were talking about various things, even children's books. Ever hear of corduroy? I love corduroy. I, I'm not familiar with that, so you can tell the audience. It's about, about a that. teddy bear. Basically, I didn't bring the first book, but it was his first in the '60s, and he was a toy teddy bear on uh, a shelf in okay. a department store. And then he started exploring the department store at night because he was missing a button, you know, and he wanted to find a lost button. But then one of the night men came and saw him and put him on back on the shelf. And um, then this little uh, girl found him, brought him home and fixed up his button. And so at first he stayed with this little girl who kind of looked like an inner city. But then later he moved, I don't know how it happened, but he moved out on his own with some, oh, this is just so adorable. With like um, Corduroy's Easter party, he moved in to his own cabin in the wilderness or something and the, it's by, based on the character created by Don Freeman, illustrated uh -huh. by Lisa McHughey. If I could cue this up, is this the, um, where's the camera? Oh, this is the camera, not the other one. Oh, Corduroy's Easter Party. Corduroy and his friends are planning an Easter party. Join them as they shop for Easter treats, decorate eggs, and wait for a very special long-eared guest. Will the Easter Bunny actually come? You know what I love to do during the Easter time, or during any time, what I love to do, is put on like George Winston or Easy Listening Guitar from Wyndham Hill and, um, you know, um, read this book. It is perfect for Well, why don't you read a short little story and that was called The Teddy Bear Picnic that, yeah, uh... Yeah, here. Um, yeah, I'll just, um, I won't read the whole thing, but I'll just glance at some of it. Okay. It was the day before Easter and Corduroy and his friends were at the playground. Poppy was having no luck getting his tie up in the air. But he didn't mind. Everyone was happy because tomorrow they were having an Easter party. Dolly said, I can't wait to see what the Easter Bunny brings us. And there is the Easter Bunny. He looks like a wild rabbit. The way they drew this is so beautiful. But they were going to have a party. Corduroy didn't say anything. Everyone had no doubt that the Easter Bunny was real. But deep down, Corduroy wasn't so, so sure. After all, nobody had ever seen the Easter Bunny. <laughs> but um, he didn't want to spoil the fun. He kept his doubts to himself. And there's the Easter Bunny again. Yeah, that Easter Bunny's nice. Oh, showed up very well. This is just so beautiful. They were at the department store. Oh, and they were planning for. Oh, there's the Easter Bunny again, watching them in that rain barrel. Oh, look at this beautiful these flowers. Oh, that is gorgeous. You can't see it very well, but back at Corduroy's house, nobody could wait to start decorating eggs. They made pink ones, blue ones, ones with star spots and stripes. When they were dry, Corduroy put, gathered all the eggs and put them in a basket. And if you can see this. I know it can't show up on camera, but the newspapers say McHughey Times. Uh huh. Let's see, Karsten, mm -hmm. Kenny Karsten, Amy Rand, and you can actually see McHughey Times. They actually are so detailed, you can see some of the graphs of this beautiful little heavenly town that they were in. <laughs> and they had the Easter party, party and this, all this beauty. Okay. But Corey did not know what to say. Easter so that's that's like a children's book, right? It, it is. What it was, did they make a, uh, a television show or anything? I think they now? might have on PBS. I May don't I see know. that book for a mm -hmm. second? 
And then the Easter Bunny did come when they were out searching for Easter eggs. You know, um, I know that the Easter season is really more about Christ. I know. I, I think it's fun when you have. I think it's adorable. Little eggs and stories. Like I think that. it's adorable. Yeah. As long as people know that Christ is Absolutely. the real emphasis. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's harmless, you know. Yeah, and Corduroy's Christmas surprise. That's that was called, beautifully done. Is that the name of the bear, Corduroy? Uh, yeah, the bear's name is Corduroy. That's interesting, like corduroy pants, huh? Yeah. Yes. Cool. And this is uh, Corduroy Wait, Christmas, and the other yes. one is Corduroy Easter. Easter party, yeah. And that Let was me a take a look at this here. Let yeah, me, certainly. Me, it's so beautifully done. Let me read a few sentences yeah. here. There, let's, let's get into my narration yeah. voice and see if I yeah. have a narration voice. There was only a week to go mm -hmm. until Christmas, and Corduroy could hardly wait. Mm -hmm. There was... This is one of the best times of the year. <laughs> yeah. Corduroy loved the smell of his mm -hmm. Christmas tree, of which I still have my Christmas tree at home. Mm -hmm. But I have an artificial tree. Yeah. Now, so. And you know what's cool about having that is, even though it's not Christmas anymore, if I want to plug it in like 4th yeah. of July or something, okay, mm -hmm. let's get back into my narration, see if I can do this. Maybe I'll get a job as a narrator. Uh, yeah, that'd be great, yeah. Yeah, like uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins, you know, he narrates the, yes, Grinch, yes, yes. the Grinch movie. Mm -hmm. Brilliant job. Corduroy loved taking the ornaments and lights out of the closet. He loved stringing popcorn mm -hmm. and berries and trimming the tree. And that was only the beginning. Corduroy's list of fun things to do at Christmas time went on and on and mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. How am I doing as my narrative? Very well. <laughs> All right, this will be the final page here. This year, Corduroy thought to himself, self? <laughs> That's not in there, I just added Yeah. That. Christmas was... Christmas was going to be even more fun than usual. His best friend, Mouse, Rabbit, Dolly, and Puppy were coming over uh, to spend Christmas Day at Corduroy's house. Mm -hmm. And he had little gifts, gifts for his guests. I'm uh -huh. sorry, but excuse me. So he pulled out the wrapping paper, tape, and ribbons. Mm -hmm. Wrapping presents always got corduroy and the holiday spirit. Yeah. I'm going to stop right there. It's just there. adorable. It is. Then it, it is, Santa it Claus is. does come in. What he basically, just to skip over, basically, he wrote um, a letter for Santa Claus wondering, I would like um, ice skates, a sweater, and trains, and a ball for me. But then he realized, you know what, he, they also wanted all of those things, and he wondered, what if there are not enough presents to go around? What if Corduroy got what he wanted, but his friends didn't? So, Corduroy pulled out a new piece of paper and wrote another letter to Santa. This is what it said. Dear Santa, please bring ice skates for Dolly, sweater for Rabbit, trains for Puppy, and a ball for Mouse. I really don't need anything this year. Thank you, Corduroy. Then he was making, oh, this is adorable, some cookies, and he eats so detailed. It even, he has a pot of tea on the stove, and there's tea, sugar, and flour, and you know, it says cookies. So in that old-fashioned stove, and then he's in his pajamas, and then he's sleeping. Uh -huh. But then there's, um, guess what? <laughs> the quarter rush of the living room to find lots of presents under the tree. Uh -huh. There's one for the mouse, and one for Evan, one for, and could it be? One for Corduroy to an extra present for each of them, because Santa had been there. Corduroy was a little surprised. Now he really couldn't wait for his friends to arrive. Uh -huh. And even Rabbit got a, um, a book about Christmas and some other things. You know what that book reminds me of? What? It, when you're those characters like Rabbit, so it makes me yes. think of Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, it is almost Let similar in a sense. Let me play that scene. It almost is similar, but I never got into Winnie the Pooh, but I love Corduroy. But yeah, this very much so. Just love. So I just love the corduroy books. I love, I love them. They've even made corduroy's Thanksgiving, and where he ate Thanksgiving really? dinner. Cool. Yeah. Hey, let me have some of that secret ingredient if you've got it. Uh... Mm-hmm. Well, so definitely. I'm glad you got to share your corduroy story. That's that's delightful for children. Yeah, it is. And uh, I think that's something we've never really quite done on the cafe before. We but never have. Fun. Yeah, I'm glad you did that. And uh, the two triplets we did and. Secret ingredient. For those who don't know what we mean by secret ingredient, it's not mm. alcohol. <laughs> no, <Nope. laughs> no. Nope. There's a scene in Star Trek V where Captain Kirk, Dr. McCoy, and Mr. Spock are on shore leave, and they're having a camp out. Mm -hmm. And Dr. McCoy is making beans. This is for the TV audience who don't know. Yes. They're making beans, and Dr. McCoy's secret ingredient was alcohol yep. put into the beans. And Spock is like, I've never tasted anything quite like this before. Mm -hmm. What is this? And uh, Spock tells, uh, I mean, 
Dr. McCoy tells Mr. Spock mm-hmm. it's alcohol, Tennessee whiskey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Am I to assume that your secret ingredient <laughs> is uh, alcohol? And so Dr. McCoy says, that's a family tradition. And then Captain Kirk yeah. says, you got any more of that secret <laughs> ingredient? <laughs> yeah. So we use that on this show as a joke. It's yeah, just, yeah. We're just drinking cola as always. Exactly. Secret ingredient. Yep. Thanks to William Shatner. Yeah, definitely. Captain Kirk. So anyway, I just wanted to clear that Wonderful, up with the television yep. audience. Yep. Let's see how much time we have. We got about... About ten minutes left. Fascinating. Not even that much. More like seven, seven minutes or something. But um, hey, I think a prayer got answered. You got through this show. Your I allergies, did. Yeah, uh, wonderful. Maybe that one allergy pill kicked in or something, or just out in a different environment. Yeah, well, I like to think that prayer kicked in. Definitely. Too. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's stuff like yeah. that. So, wow. Mm-hmm. Twenty seventeen. Can you believe? Yeah, it? yeah. Twenty seventeen. You got any plans this year? Um, well, one thing, maybe we could talk about this because we talked about it last week and um, um, it didn't get aired. Last week's didn't get aired. The, I never make New Year's resolutions. That's right. I yeah, never make New Year's resolutions. A lot of people do. Mm-hmm. I like the way my life's going. And New Year's resolutions always get broken, so I never make them. Yeah, but I mean, just like any particular plant. Oh, like just my me. garden. Just yeah. my garden. I'm looking forward to my garden this year. I don't know what I'm going to plant, but... Yeah, with me, uh, just to see if I can get that job with ABC. In fact, Scott's going to help me put a DVD together after we tape this show. Uh-huh. And you remember I told you I did my top ten mm-hmm. musical notes with ASAP, the ASAP stories? Mm-hmm. We're going to crop it to where instead of the whole show, just go to the immediate story, and I'll put ten on one DVD to present it to yep. stations. So that's yep. what I'm going to do later on today. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> I'm hoping that I'll get that job with ABC because I yeah. want to tell those stories. Because you know what's good about those stories? I think you've seen a couple of them. Yes. I don't talk about their personal lives. Yeah. I just focus on the accomplishments and the contributions that they've done. Mm-hmm. And it just makes it delightful. So that's... Yeah. I'm going to... Uh, you know, Scott and I is going to help me. He's going to help me put that together today. And I need to do that today. Yeah, and yeah. The, there's an ABC uh, station here on Stevens Drive, I think it is. Yeah. And uh, my name has already been sent statewide. They sent my name and the video links Wonderful. to all the ABC stations throughout the state of Montana. But I think I need to go to the next step and have a physical mm-hmm. DVD. So yeah, can yeah. Visualize it more. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're going to do this afternoon. Yeah. Let's see how much time do we have left. Uh, any final things you want to say? Let's see. Um, I can't really think of any, and I've run out of surreal jokes, you know. Well, that's okay. I, I know what I can say. Uh. It's 2017, and Emma and I want to wish everybody a happy 2017 and hope that this will be a good year for you. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever your dreams are, yeah. follow your dreams. Definitely. <clears throat> You know, don't don't be like that Sinatra song. You know that song, put your dreams away for yeah, the other day. Yeah, <laughs> And I and yeah. I, I think it's a beautiful song that Sinatra put out. Mm-hmm. But no, you don't want to put your dreams away for another. No, day. you, you do want not. to follow your dreams. You but do. it's a beautiful melody. Let me mm-hmm. play a piece of it for you. Oh, I have heard this on the easy listening stations somewhere. Wait, is it the same one? Da, 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 da. Yes, they've done beautiful instrumentals of this that I've just loved. Even with DMX, that was kind of cable radio hooked up. That was years ago, but I've heard this. Yeah, I've had it on tape, so it's beautiful. Yeah, I'll do it for you. <clears throat> yep. made me think of sunshine and flowers but that's what I want to do this year get my garden going again in spring and summertime you know yeah you know they played that for Frank Sinatra's home going yeah that was the theme song to his, his home going uh, home going well when he when we lost him oh yes yes when we lost him because um, I, from what I understand on the documentaries his daughter Nancy and all the people involved thought that was the appropriate song yeah. 
But yeah, I have to agree with it. It's a beautiful melody, and I know the context of the song, but no, you don't want to put your dreams on No, you don't. <laughs> you don't want to follow those dreams. So the point of this, at the conclusion is, is we hope that uh, people will follow their dreams. Yep. And my dream is ABC. And if yep. I get on there, I'll be like, thank you, God. Because I want to tell those ASAP stories on the ABC exactly. Network. So that's my goal. So having said that about follow your dreams, this is ASAP Cafe, and we're uh, season 11. This is episode 3. It should have been 4, but it's episode 3. Mm -hmm. And this time, the sound went through perfectly, and we didn't make any mistakes. I didn't touch anything. I told Scott I wasn't going to touch any of the equipment or anything. Yeah. And once it's adjusted. Plus, we have double mics to make yes. sure. Any final words? Can't think of any. All right. Normally, well, I think of surreal jokes, but I'm running out of them. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, I guess this is... Uh, ASAP Cafe, I'm your host, ASAP I'm right. Affectionately on my left, our aging rocker Emmett. Thank you for tuning in. Until our next show, Maranatha. Freeze on that mm -hmm. card. We'll make yourself at home. We'll shut everything down and yep. make you a copy.